Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. Last week, I talked about gaslighting and how it causes someone to question their reality and sanity. Today, I want to talk about narcissism because I believe it is a cousin of gaslighting. Well, maybe not a cousin, but definitely a relative. So what is narcissism? It is defined as extreme self-involvement or self-absorption to the degree that it makes a person completely ignore the needs of those around them. It is a me, myself, and I syndrome that is considered by some to be a personality disorder. So how do you know if you're dealing with a narcissist? Well, you might be dealing with the narcissist if they are two-faced, putting friends and family down behind their backs, if they tend to blame their failures and success on others, if they act differently in public than in private, if they are arrogant, act superior, especially to people close to them, if they lie, distort facts, and change events to suit their own agenda, if they are emotionally distant and unavailable unless they need something, if they lack sympathy for others, especially those they exploit, if they are controlling and unable to relax, if they regularly provoke people and then blame them for the fight, if they have trouble admitting their mistakes. That's how you know. So what are the traits of a narcissist? Number one, a lack of empathy, which is the ability to identify with or recognize the feelings and experiences of others. They are manipulative, number two. They twist a situation to suit their narrative. Number three, they project. They accuse someone else of doing something they are doing. Uh, for example, a person who is cheating will accuse their partner of doing so. Number four, they're emotionally cold, shallow, and lack an ability to comfort others. They tend to check out when you need them. Number five, they, they gaslight. There's that word again, the relative of narcissism. They deny a person's experience. Number six, they never take responsibility. They are never wrong. They rationalize everything and they deflect. Number seven, they're controlling. They want to dictate every aspect of your life. Number eight, grandiose. They exaggerate accomplishments, talents, connections, and experiences. And number nine, infidelity. They are wired to be unfaithful due to their great need for admiration because their loyalty is only to themselves. There's a quote. Narcissists are known for their bragging skills. They will overly compensate for the lack of substance in their lives by excessive talk about achievements and possessions that they don't actually have. They see everything as a competition. So if they see you doing better in life, they will have to one-up you and say they are better. They will brag about achievements and accomplishments and or accolades that they never received. They need to booster their ego at all costs. So what happens when you criticize a narcissist? They can become impatient or angry when they don't receive special treatment. They can react with rage or contempt, and they'll try to belittle the other person to make themselves appear superior. There's a quote, nobody gets angrier than a narcissist being accused of something they definitely did. So what are some things that, you know, can make a narcissist mad at you? Well, if you don't make them the center of the universe, if you don't give attention if you get or give attention to someone else, if you give criticism, which we just talked about, even if it's constructive, if you assert a standard or a boundary, if you are really pleased with something, uh, if you have any achievements and if you are blessed, there is a book, Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, that really illustrates how narcissism works. It tells the story of a handsome young man who became obsessed with his own beauty after seeing a portrait his artist friend made of him. Uh, referring to his beauty in the portrait and his youth, he says, I am jealous of the portrait you have painted of me. Why should it keep what I must lose? Another quote from the book is, there is only one thing in the world worse than being talked about, and that is not being talked about. Yet another quote, 
To be good is to be in harmony with one's self. Discord is to be forced to be in harmony with others. One's own life, that is the important thing. As for the lives of one's neighbors, they are not one's concerns. Being indiv Besides, individualism is really the higher aim. Can you hear the narcissism in those quotes? I have had encounters with the textbook definition of a narcissist, and I can tell you from personal experience, they are very resistant to change. Unless they are willing to get help or divine intervention occurs, they are more likely to destroy you than you are to change their behavior. There's another quote, a narcissist will kill your spirit until you are an unrecognizable shell of the person you used to be, and then they will blame you. You end up being the reason and the villain in all of the chaos they created. I read a strategy for dealing with narcissists is telling them the opposite of what you want them to do. So if you want them to take you somewhere, you tell them you don't want to go because they never want to do anything that you want to do. They only want to please themselves. It's a crazy idea, I know, but some experts say it works. The only thing that worked for me after unsuccessfully attempting to reason with and express my feelings to the narcissist was to get off the emotional roller coaster they had me on. I had to distance myself and I had to love them and pray for them from afar. I'm a Christian, so I don't believe that people cannot be redeemed. Uh, but I do not also don't believe that toxic behavior should be dealt with necessarily up close and personal. You can love people and you can pray for people and you can wish people well, and you can even help people from a distance. Uh, and sometimes it is appropriate to do so, especially when a situation is toxic or harmful or dangerous in any way. So in, in, in my case, I had to draw the line in the sand and say no more. You may also have to walk away from the narcissist in your life to break that cycle of abuse. I'm going to leave you with a quote and a poem. The quote is by Maria Consiglia who is a therapist um, that has worked with, you know, different personalities, including narcissists. And she says, the more I study narcissism, the more I realize their minds don't work the same way our minds work. They function differently. They are always trying to fill that empty void inside. They use abuse, addictions like pornography, drugs, looking for this fantasy person who does not exist, and anything else that temporarily fills them up or at least distracts them. They are not looking for the same things we are looking for. You will always go around in circles with a narcissist. You will never get what you're looking for because, and this is important, they don't want the same things that you do. You will forever be trying to reach them and they don't want to be reached. Normal life is boring to a narcissist. They don't want a normal life. You are playing with fire when you get into a relationship with a narcissist and you will get burned. Finally, I leave this poem with anyone who has ever been hurt by a narcissist. Uh, it is called, Why Did They Try to Destroy You? by John Mark Green. Why did they try to destroy you? Because the darkness in them recoils from your light. Their empty heart resents your abundant love, and their strange hunger feeds on the pain they cause. Despite doing the worst, they could never break you. They hate you because they are something monstrous and you are nothing like them. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.